Question. If an equilateral triangle loop of side A is at a distance A from a current carrying a wire, wherein the current varies as I equals I initial times T, find both the magnetic flux induced and the electromotive force, EMF. Okay, so first thing we want to think about here is magnetic flux. So the whole idea with flux is flux is some sort of field, dot, and area. And flux itself is a scalar. So what we're going to, and how this is going to work is a dot product is a measure of how parallel two vectors are. So the magnetic field, this current carrying wire is going to create a magnetic field like so. So when we get to this equilateral triangle here, it's going to create a magnetic field into the board. And the area vector for this area is going to be a vector that is normal to the uh, area, to the plane of the shape. So that's going to be either into the board or out of the board. Either way, that is going to be parallel to the magnetic field. So a lot, a lot of said there, basic idea is we can just write this flux as magnetic field times area. Okay, so now we're gonna be like, all right, so we have a small bit of flux, and that's gonna equal a small bit of magnetic field times area, not too bad. So then the question becomes, well, what is magnetic field? So magnetic field, I'm gonna do magnetic field L, is gonna be the magnetic field due to a line, to a, uh, uh, current carrying wire, straight wire, mu naught i over 2 pi r. And this can be found, I think, using Ampere's law, um, but we're just going to take it as a given. And I'm just going to write big I here, though really we know it is I naught times t. So then the next part of the question is, what is the area? The area is going to be, I'm going to draw the area right here. I'm going to say this is dw for width times length. So a small bit of area is going to be the length times a small bit of width. So now this is where life gets a little bit messy. So I'm going to redraw the top of the triangle here. I'm going to draw it like this. So this is our axis. This will be x. This will be y. And this distance here is going to be a. And we basically have this triangle right here, just the top half. And so looking at this we can see that this is going to be a distance a this is going to be a over two and since this is an equilateral triangle we know this angle right there is 60 degrees so when we split it in half this angle right here is going to be half of that 30 degrees and so that tells us cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2 so this is going to be a length of square root of 3 over 2 a on the bottom of the triangle. Okay, so if we want to draw, make an equation for this line, this area right here, I'm going to say y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, where m is this slope, and that slope is going to be rise over run. So rise is over a over 2 divided by square root, oh, that is a terrible square root, square root of 3 over 2 times a. When you divide fractions, you multiply reciprocals. So a over 2 times 2 over square root of 3. I know this is difficult because my 2s look exactly like my a's. Unnecessary, excessive confusion. 1 over square root of 3. All right, so that's the slope. And the point we're going to use is going to be this point right here. And that's going to be at point a comma 0. And so then this becomes... The y1 goes away because that is 0. x1, the point we're using for x1 is a. So y equals 1 over square root of 3 times x minus a. Well, x in this case is going to be this distance right here. No, y. That's y. Um, so uh, the length 
of this area, of this uh, part of the triangle right here, or this rectangle, I guess, is going to be L over 2. Because I'm only looking at the top half of the triangle, I'm going to, to double it up. And that's going to equal 1 over square root of 3. And instead of using x, I'm going to use, I'm going to say that x equals r, where r is just the radius from our uh, current carrying wire. So this is going to be 1 over square root of 3, r minus a, where a is just a constant. All right, so now we've got most of that. Um, so l equals 2 over square root of 3, r minus a, true. We're going to come back up to here. We're going to say that uh, a l delta w delta w is just going to be the same as delta r, small bit of r, small bit of radius. So small bit of a equals 2 over square root of 3 r minus 2 over square root of 3 times a delta r. All right, so now we have, we can plug this all together. So the magnetic flux is going to be magnetic field times area. In this case, it's going to be the magnetic field, which will be constant over this region over here. So this is going to be the same as B delta A. Um, there's some more nuance in why that is. It has to do with the product rule of derivatives, but I'm just going to gloss over that right now and say for this region right here, it uh, magnetic field is constant, so we can just kind of pull it out. And so I'm going to say that the small bit of flux is going to equal B, the magnetic field due to a line, mu naught I over 2 pi R times, let's see what we've got here, the mess of 2 over square root of 3 R minus 2 over square root of 3 a delta r. And so what we want though is the whole flux. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to integrate this from our starting point to our final point, which is going to be right here from r equals a to r equals a plus, and then we're going to do this distance right here, which is going to be square root of 3 over 2a. I know it looks messy. It is messy. I apologize, but we are going to work with this. So we're going to pull out all the constants. That's a good first step for integrating. So mu naught, constant. Current, as far as we're concerned, is a constant. You're right, it varies with time, but it's not r, which is the only constant we care about at this point. So integral, um, we can also pull out a 2 and a square root of 3. And we're going to have r minus a dr. I'm going to call this a. And I'm going to simplify this to 2a plus square root of 3 over 2. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. 2 plus square root of 3a. There we go. So now, this is the integral we're going to work with. Uh, do a little bit of canceling. That is just a little bit of canceling. And so now, I'm going to rewrite this as mu naught i over a pi square root of 3. And then, we're going to have our integral of r. Oh, I forgot the other r. So there's this r right here. That also needs to be in here. So over r, over r. There we go. Almost forgot that, would have been tragic. So then we have r over r, which becomes one. So we have one there, dr minus a one over r dr. And then this is all like this. And we still have our beginning and end uh, limits of integration as well. I just didn't write them in to save time for convenience. All right, so now we can totally do this. So now we have mu naught i pi times the square root of 3 times 
Now this is just going to be um, r minus a natural log of r evaluated from a, what do we say, 2 plus square root of 3? 2 plus square root of 3 over 2a, plugging in our values. I'm going to get mu naught, I'm going to write this now as i naught times t over pi square root of 3 times, and this is going to be a mess, 2 plus square root of 3 over 2a minus a natural log of 2 plus square root of 3 over 2a. That's supposed to be an a? That's supposed to be an a. I think so. Yep, I'm confident. And now I'm going to do minus a. So now we're plugging in this a down here plus, because this is a double negative, negative and a minus. Ooh, did I mess that up already? I think I already did. Nope, I think I'm good. Minus a natural log of, let's see here, 2 plus square root of 3. No, 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 no. Natural log of just a. There we go. Natural log of A. And we could simplify this. There's ways to simplify it. But I don't think it's really worth simplifying. Because if we we can pull out an A, that's true. Um, actually, I, I'll, and I'll probably do that on the next iteration. So actually, that might be worth doing. So just to make things slightly cleaner, we're going to pull out a mu naught i naught t over pi square root of 3 times 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 minus natural log of 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 a minus a no, minus 1, plus natural log of a, which we assume to be positive, so I'm going to leave off the absolute value of And this right here is going to be the magnetic flux through our triangle. Um, yes. So then, the second part of the question, what we're really getting at here, is what is the EMF, electromotive force, induced by this change in magnetic field? And so the reason a changing magnetic field induces an EMF is because an EMF is negative deflux dt. We already have our deflux up here. And so to find, or we already have our flux up there, which is the vast majority of the problem in this case. So we take the derivative of this with respect to t, and everything here is a constant because it doesn't, it's independent of t, except for t itself, and so we just get rid of this t right here, pow, same thing down there, put a little negative sign to show us the opposite direction because the uh, electromagnetic force is going to create a current which will create a magnetic field which will oppose the change in the uh, current magnetic field that's being changed, the original magnetic field. So that is how we find an EMF.